There we go. Drink left-handed. Well, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to see you. Thank you. So we're going for 98 views? Is, hey. that, the, is that the goal? 96. 96. Let's not push ourselves too hard. <laughs> <laughs> See if we can get 96. <laughs> Matt, eat your heart out. Yeah, set a new record. Try harder, Matt. Get more friends. <laughs> or more kids to click that play button. Or learn how to code mm. and make some bots. I think that's the way to do it. It's a, That seems to be the go at the day. Like the whole Twitter thing, Elon, going ahead, not going ahead. Mate, if, he, bots. if Matt wrote some bots, he could sell this for... Well, you can yeah. sell it for $8 billion, right? Yeah. Someone retarded who puts rockets into the sky to buy it. Yeah. That's a possibility. <laughs> but that's a weird thing because Twitter's got all that value. And then maybe it really doesn't. Like how many people that you think you're talking to on Twitter are you not? Are you really t talking to a bot to? Does it matter? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it really matters, but it certainly would influence conversation and the way things happen on Twitter on Twitter you know if you're if you think you're having conversation about a topic and then someone comes in and sort of flames you and you respond to it and then something else someone gets in and you're in this big stoush you're like there's actually you're not really talking to of those five people you think you're talking to two of them aren't real they're just stirring you up I, I think it's Trump <laughs> <laughs> I think he's still pissed off they kicked him off the platform and he's just out there with a the phone just saying just, you know what fuck this I'm going to bot the hell out of this thing. And he's just typing random shit. <laughs> and and he's doing it. And then he calls his mate, Vlad, right? Hey, Putin, I know you're fucking busy at the moment <laughs> dropping bombs on people, but you want to pile in on this cunt? Can you just, right? just, <laughs> just help get some of those scammer programmers of yours to exactly. set some more bots up? Exactly. Yeah, it all worked until the FBI came in and took all his phones away, right? Ah. Uh. So, Oh, well. well, maybe that was like the slight dip when Elon was talking in the bots. Now he's got his phones back and it's up again. Yeah. Could yeah. be. Yeah. Could Talk be. about buyers of remorse, though. Yeah. You spend billions of dollars, right? You make big noise about it and then you realize, oh, shit, what have I done? Yeah. That was the worst Amazon drunken purchase I've <laughs> ever done. It's like, <laughs> holy shit. Like a four-day bender, you wake up and you're like, oh, no. Yeah. My wife's going to kill me. How do I get out of this? Like, can I just write a note back to them and say, look, I, sorry, I really don't want to buy it anymore. Yeah. I'm like, you, you buy flowers and you say, honey, I'm really sorry. I bought Twitter. Could you imagine that conversation? <laughs> Wouldn't that be a Shouldn't great conversation? rip his eyes out. I would love to do that. Say, oh, look, I'm really sorry, but I bought Twitter. What do you mean you bought Twitter? Yeah, I actually bought Twitter. What are you talking about? You haven't about? even gone to the moon yet. Yeah. You bought Twitter? <laughs> We have a plan. We have a schedule here. <laughs> well, How are you going to tell the alphabet soup, our, our well, child, whatever we call that, the, the child, that you bought a platform? And which of his many wives would he be telling? That's fair. Because I think he's got like eight kids. And I think he's planning on having more. I think the plan is to repopulate the planet. But I think he's got eight well, kids. Well, yeah. One ex-Johnny Depp partner at a time, I think. He's oh. just going to, yeah, he's got a strategy. Yeah, it's like Dr. Evil. You've got to have a straight. <laughs> Dr. Evil. Because, you know, starting this podcast, I just thought I really should probably get out ahead of this and create the meme myself of Dr. Evil with mini me and stick Joe Rogan's head on top and me underneath. <clears throat> and I think it just takes all the sting out of it if I've done it yeah, first. You yeah. Know? And have like a, a Rogan face on a dartboard and you just kind of, <laughs> you know, throw in darts and hopefully you don't hit somebody across you. But you, yeah, go for Rogan. <laughs> Uh, so how long have you been in New Zealand? Forever. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, but I'm okay. Yeah. No, um, 20 years now. Yeah, right. 20 years. Right. Uh, so a third of your life then? <laughs> quarter of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I just look good for my age. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, 20 years mm. and... I've got no plans to, to move unless they want to kick me out for some reason, but well, otherwise I'd stay. I think they've proven once you leave the country, they don't let you back in. So, um, yeah. yeah, you don't want to go. You don't want to leave the fortress. No. Don't leave the island. Well, it's funny because <clears throat> we've got to build walls to sort of keep people in and out. And the Kiwis, <clears throat> they don't. They just have a prime minister say, hey, <laughs> you leave, you're not coming back in. Everybody's like, oh, that's it. We're never going to leave. Yeah. Not going out again. Yeah. Fair enough. 
Yeah, it'd be nice to be able to go and travel a little more freely. Like I say, this just this week I read that Air New Zealand are flying to New York again. They've re-established that flight. They still haven't re-established their flights to Chicago. Yeah, no. or Christchurch, but yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Through the bus. Well, could you imagine? I feel bad, <clears throat> you know, for, for Greg. He comes all the way back, right? He's done his stint. He's run the world's largest retailer, Walmart, in the U.S. And he's like, you know what? I want to go back home, okay? And I'm, But I can't just retire. I'd be bored. So he says, oh, I want something fairly cruisy. Pick the airline, right? It's mm. backed by the government. It's one of two ways out of the country. It's a waka or a plane. And he said, ah, it's easy, right? They just got to make sure planes don't crash and, you know, pretty cruisy role for a guy like that, of that talent. And then COVID hit. Mm. Now he's like, I'm mm. going to work. Mm. Got to do right? something to pull this thing out of the work. ground and get it working yeah. again. Making no money. Everything's yeah. moving against him. But yeah, smart dude. But I feel for the guy. Yeah, it'd be a tough role, I suppose. It would be, you know, at top of a national airline, yeah. national carrier. Yeah. For a fairly visible role. Yeah. Anything goes wrong. But then again, you're right. You just got to keep those planes in the air. Yeah. That's, that's the thing, hey. That's the thing you just cannot let happen as an airline. You can't have one of your planes hit the ground. It's like, fuck, no one's booking flights with us anymore. Like the Malaysian Airlines, like a week yeah. after they lost their first plane, they had uh, a special, flights to nowhere special. Mm. It's like, ooh. Mm. That person, that mm. marketer, is either really, really brilliant <laughs> or it's Elon Musk yeah. and a Twitter bot. <laughs> it's like, that's just Bots. wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. No. But surprisingly good record. Has it New Zealand had any plane crashes? No. 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 Well, no. Not had the Erebus that. thing, but that wasn't New yeah. Zealand. It wasn't uh, the... In New Zealand, that was before that. Yeah, I don't know much too much about that. That's some Antarctic flight, so. Yeah, no. looking, you know, anytime. Qantas? Qantas haven't had any f- I don't think crashes. Qantas have figured out how to take off just <laughs> yet. I mean, it's the untimed de- departure is like 10 years in between planes. It's ridiculous. Mm. You know, I, I actually flew the other day, and it was... You know, not a bad experience because the Aussies have moved on from COVID, right? No one wears masks mm. at all. So it's it's pretty cruising in, in the airport, but nothing works properly because mm. there's lots of different rules and some rules don't exist, but you still have to do the paperwork on apps and mm-hmm. things like that. And, and planes, you know, like Heathrow, only allowing half the planes in, right? And planes are just turning up anyway. Like Emirates sent him an email saying, yeah, nah. We're mm-hmm. coming anyway, find room. Yep. And yeah, it was just an absolute sort of disaster, you know, flying just to, to Sydney. Um, and then you come back, everything's delayed. So like you take yep. a late night flight, you end up landing at like one in the morning, yeah. two in the morning. You never used to be able to do that. And then you wait, you know, four hours through biosecurity. It's ridiculous. Like nothing is easy. Yeah. Just yeah. horrible. The most expensive travel you can have, flying, and the experience is pretty rough yeah, sometimes. It's pretty, pretty poor. So, yeah, I, I flew yesterday, just domestically, both flights, both ways, delayed. Right. You know, I, 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 the second time there was an announcement from the, you know, the woman controlling the, 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 the cab and the plane, um, and she was saying it was, it was sickness, you know, too many people still off with COVID or colds and flus or something, and that ground crew staffing problems. Yeah. But, um, it's interesting, and I'm, I've been over wearing masks. So I went onto the plane, and they asked me as I was checking in because I didn't have a mask. I was the only person in the line. Well, I thought I was the only person in the line who didn't have a mask on, and said, I scanned my little code, and the lady said, Do you have a mask? And I said, No. I said, um, I've got an exemption. She said, Oh, you've got a mask exemption. Oh, that's fine. I was like, Oh, cool. Did you? Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. Right. And so I, I, I walked out and got on the plane, and then I got to the the two, like the, the hostesses who were at the front of the plane as you walk in and greet you there, I didn't have a mask on. And I didn't say anything to them. I think they must just assume if you've got that far like that. Um, but then when I sat down at the back of the plane, one of, another one came up to me and said, oh, sorry, you've got to put a mask on. And I said, oh. Actually, she said, do you have a mask? I said, I do have one, but I don't want to put it on. She said, well, you have to, unless you've got an exemption. I said, I've got an exemption. She said, oh, I'm really sorry. That's okay. Um, <laughs> 
and walked away. And the dude was sitting next to me, this mask on, and I can see him look at me and look at her and going, fuck, I should just say I've got an exemption. Okay, so, uh, like, straight away, like, he, he pulls it down under his nose, and then after five Cheeky minutes, he sort kid. of takes it off to start talking to me. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing I love about Kiwis, right? One of the best things American uh, Americans export is aggravation. Right. Oh. If you go on YouTube and everything you see, I think they call them Karens, oh. you know, just starting fights for oh. no reason. And, and Kiwis, friendly, lovely people. I'm like, oh, we don't want to be those people. Yeah. Right. So you can get away with anything here yeah. in this country because they just don't want the confrontation. It's like, eh, it's yeah. just not worth it. Yeah. So I have, I now have a mask exemption. So it's great. Yeah. I, um, I find, cause there's still, yeah, in some areas, there's still a fair few people wearing masks, but a lot aren't. At the airport yesterday, there were a lot who weren't. Like, I flew yeah. a month or so ago, and there were a lot more people wearing masks yeah. then. Now there's not. But it was fun, to, like, the people who weren't wearing masks, as you're walking past, you know, I'm a smiley kind of guy. Yeah. You know, I'd smile at them. You'd see them smile back, and I almost wonder, like, are we smiling at each other because we're not wearing masks? Is that why? <laughs> or is it just because I can actually see your face, and I know that you're smiling? The exemption club. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a... um. At the airport here, there's the the lounge, the, the Coro yeah. lounge, but there's another exclusive yeah, one. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. I got taken up to that there one day. Really? Yeah. We got a, um, How did you get in? I, exactly. Oh, people. And <laughs> we've, got, we've got a friend of ours who we've, we've met through the, the kombucha business. Uh, he's, a, he's a character. He's a real character. I got it like he's just one of those people who mm. lives his life his way. Anyhow. I was going to Fiji, and he was going to Fiji at the same time. And so we're talking. He's like, oh, if, Tim, if you're going to Fiji, meet me at the airport. I'll take you up to the lounge. And I was like, okay, sweet. And so I'm thinking we're going to go to the Koro Lounge. I was like, yeah, great. We're going to the Koro Lounge. And then we walk along together, and we stop and take this little right-hand turn here up to this, this doorway. <clears throat> and go up this doorway and then get let in, go up these stairs, and then there's this other lounge, which is like right over looking over the runway with about seven leather lazy boy recliners all facing out to the glass <laughs> and behind it a, yeah. a fully stocked bar like open yeah. bar with everything yeah. and we're sitting in there i was like jesus you weren't pulling my leg man you actually get in here well, his work takes him everywhere like renee spoke to him last week he's like oh, i can catch up on monday but then i'm off to la and then i'm over to china and then i'm back to belgium and then i'll be back from somewhere or san francisco the week after so like he's just everywhere so he's got so many travel miles yeah. um so we're sitting in the lounge and you know the this, this man walks up um part of the staff the staff there and he's like hi how are you he's like oh how are you good to see you hugs what would you like tim what do you want for breakfast i was like well what have you got and he's like well, what do you want? I was like, I don't know. Eggs, Benedict, salmon? Sure, sir. Lobster no problems. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a bottle of champagne, <laughs> like whatever time it is before our flight. This is flash. Well, you, you, you know, you walked, you walked into Qantas Lounge is what you actually did. <clears throat> so you, <laughs> that's where he took you. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what all the big red kangaroos were there for. Oh, what the hell is this? Is this civilization? <laughs> oh. It would not be that difficult to fool me at the airport. At international airports, are they constantly remodeling? Is that some anti-terrorism <clears throat> plan or something? So I don't know. You can never plan an attack because you never know what the room's going to look like when you get there the next week. I don't know. I mean, the best ones are Virgin, right? Branson, he doesn't run it anymore, but it's still his ethos. And, and they would change that lounge. It felt like every other day mm -hmm. when I was in Europe. And basically planes are like taxis. You know, most places are within a couple of hours of each other. You're up at 4 in the morning. You're on the 5 a.m. flight. And then you're in an office somewhere, Denmark or wherever, for, for the morning. And every Virgin Lounge that I was in was, was the same but different, right? Mm. So they all had beds and showers. You're like, well, this is yeah. actually a brothel. <laughs> <laughs> and, and bars. But the configuration would change. And, it was, and you'd almost walk in, you think, I'm drunk. Because I have no idea. I've been here before, but it I don't. All remember. looks different, <laughs> and it's like. But they, I don't know why they do it. It can't, it can't be security. I, I'm honestly certain beyond the lounges, even just the airport shopping areas, they're in a like yeah, you know, like corporates are in 
constant restructuring mode. It's like, we just finished restructuring, well, we're just starting a new restructuring, yeah. a new GM coming. They're, they're like that. It's like that laneway of shops wasn't there last time. And that one that used to have the big round thing in the middle of the auditorium, well, where's that gone now? There's a <laughs> pond. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, maybe the difference is because everyone else can build things quickly. I think here in New Zealand, we struggle to put a road down within a decade. Mm. So so maybe we don't change as much because it's just too hard. You've got to you question that. Do you remember a couple of years ago in Japan, I think it was, that sinkhole formed <laughs> in the middle of an intersection? And then like 48 hours later, trucks and buses is going across it again? <laughs> yeah. I was like, just fill what? It up. Just whoever that crew was, hire them yeah. and bring them here and make them build all the roads. Right. The Dutch, the Dutch like go in and they build a bridge overnight. Right, yeah. like an overpass bridge, and there's this truck, big bridge building truck, and they literally just pick it up and drop it in, and 30 second YouTube video, and you're like, why didn't we think of that? Yeah. And you turn and you look, Wellington's still being built. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, guys, it's actually not that hard. Call the Dutch, yeah, have good. them come over, and they can sort it all out. There's got to be some. <laughs> There's got to be some ways to build roads faster. If you're building a road, you've made a decision to build the road. There's got to be a way to build it faster than the way we do. Like, even they're expensive, I know, but still, wouldn't you in some cases just say, okay, let's have rotating crews. Let's go 24-7 and... Yeah, I mean, look, I'm, I don't want to criticize anybody. I'm not a builder. Look at my dainty hands, right? <laughs> but um, I do agree that there has to be a better way. Well, you see, that's what I'm saying. That right. example of that Japanese intersection was a good example of how you can do that. All that stuff got rewired, all that stuff was replumbed, yeah. all that base was put in and reset and done in an incredibly short period of time. Yeah. There's got to be ways to do Well, that. the thing I like is like on the Northern Motorway, they're like, all right, we're going to make it wider because there are more cars and there's a pinch point here, so it'll come here. Mm -hmm. So what they do is say they'll make it wider and put the pinch point about a K down the road. Yeah. You haven't solved the fucking pinch point. Yeah, I know. Right? Just Make backs the whole up. damn thing wider. I know. <laughs> you haven't solved the problem. Yes, you've created jobs. You've poured more mafia-style concrete on the ground. But seriously, this is not brain surgery. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on. But, yeah. But um, it seems to be the Kiwi way. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it, but it's like that everywhere, sort of across country throughout the world. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. You know? But you, you just... You just think there's some, like you say, pre prefabricated bridges and things, prefabricated houses. It feels like that's the sort of thing yeah. you could do, you could do with a road. Yeah, it's different. But I, I, when they built that roadway out here, that motorway out here a couple of years ago, you know, that was just frustrating driving past through all the single lane bits and waiting. And there was a bit it was a rainy day, and so rain work was called off. And you're like. There's surely there's a way we can put a tent up and you can work in the rain when you're building a road. You're like, you're in a truck digging the road up and laying the concrete. Yeah. Can you not do that in the rain? I'll, I'll tell you, it's, 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 it's the same in England, right? I remember when I first moved to England and so I came from New York and we had literally overnight about two feet of snow, like proper weather. Land in, in London, get in Heathrow and jump on the train from, from Heathrow into the city. And the train had stopped, and there was snow on the track. Peer my head out, like a millimeter of snow. I'm like, and I'm a, you know, arrogant New York. I'm like, fuck off. You know, let's just go. And I'm, I'm all wound up, you know, six hour overnight flight. I'm like, this isn't snow. It was two feet where I came from. And then over the years, because I'd lived there for a very long time, there's, there's leaves on the tracks. It's like, oh my God, what kind of leaves are these? <laughs> They must be some big fucking leaves. It's a jungle. Stop leaves. a train from Manchester yeah. to London. But what I really realized is they didn't want anyone from the north coming into London. That's so what they it was. blame the leaves. You blame anything. Yeah. There's some dust. Yeah. We've actually found a little bit of grit exactly. on the track. Sorry, you have yeah. to go back. Yeah. yeah. And when I left London to move here, we, we've put out feather dusters. We could dust it and get. No, 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 no. Your dusters won't cut no. it. Sorry, you're out of here. <laughs> yes. And when I left London, it was 28 degrees. So the at the time the this temperature was just eclipsed a couple of weeks ago and 28 point something degrees and it was hot and Brits love to just whinge about everything. So just two weeks before we're whinging about the rain. Now it's 28 degrees. I bought a kid's paddling pool, sat my fat ass in that paddling pool and I'm loving it. And the Brits come out. It's too hot. <laughs> Like Jesus Christ. There's leaves in the pool. No wonder everyone <laughs> wants to leave the Commonwealth. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> the Queen. Yes, the, I know. The Queen. I know. Long, long live the... No, uh, <clears throat> the Queen is dead. Long live the King. Long live the King. Charles. Um, yeah. Yeah, interesting way. Never met the lady. Um, she but, never calls me. <clears throat> no. <laughs> but what's amazing, you know... So America's, what, 200 and where I was born, 250, 60 years old, right? The Queen sat in her chair, presided over the Commonwealth for about, what? 70 years? 70, yeah, 70, 70 years. years? That's 30, 40% That's of the time America's been a, a country. I don't know. What did she go through? 13 prime ministers. Exactly. You know, right. So it'd be, it'd be intimidating. You're Boris Johnson and you turn up and you're like, I'm a fucking... What about, you know, Elizabeth Truss? Yeah. She killed the queen. That's what I heard. That's what Twitter says. <laughs> That's what Twitter says. She turned up, met the queen. Could be the bots. The queen was dead. Yeah. It's it's trust. It's the whole True. Brexit game. It's quite conclusive, isn't yeah. it? Really? It's scientific. It's no question. You know, I called yeah. Elon today and that's what he said. Misinformation if people try denying that. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, I, it's definitely trust. Yeah. You know. But yeah, um, look, it's it's going to be a divisive topic. It already is a divisive topic. Look on Twitter. You know, some people are like, oh, you yeah, know, I'm sad to see her. Other people are like, Glad she's gone. So ah, yeah, it's a tough so, one. But yeah, I think the Irish are enjoying, right? There. But um, yeah, look, I mean, I'm, I'm not. I'm neither a fan nor against royalty. I, I admit I don't understand it. Um, I'm a big fan of Harry. Right. Yeah. I remember when he was a young lad, he would go out to Vegas, boatload <laughs> of cocaine. <laughs> Hookers, I'm like, that dude is awesome. He's living the I life. I mean, he is like... If you're a prince. <laughs> it's awesome, right? But, yeah, I just don't see the point. They got flash houses. They get everything. They're born into it. And, you know, and yeah, you know, whatever. But she was an amazing lady. She dealt with a lot of stuff. Oh, you, I think you've got to give her credit. Yeah, an amazing, amazing character. Of you know of the of the time you know like you say seventy years ruling, well the, ruling the monarchy. I mean I think she lost a lot of the power of what let's say her grandmother yeah. had. Yeah, you know, Victor, you know, Victoria yeah. was powerful, powerful ruler. Whereas Elizabeth, I think, has been a caretaker of a role. I don't 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 know what power she actually has or. You know, um, the artist formerly known as Prince Charles. <laughs> has. Uh, no. But it, it, it scared me because um, I remember years ago when I was in, in the UK and Prince had died, right? Um, and s somewhere around Christmas time, we were kind of walking around. They do these uh, garden lights. You can walk around the various different uh, grounds and have these light shows and things. And, and I'm joking with a mate of mine, Ewan. I said, you know what, you know, um, Prince uh, uh, Boy George is going to die, right? I mean, that's the next one. We're joking. Literally, like six hours later, the dude's dead. Is Boy George dead? Yeah, I think he's dead. No, he's not dead. Yeah, well, who's the other guy with all the makeup and the, and the hat? It was the... Oh, Pete, uh, someone. No, the guy from... The guy from Spin Me Round, yeah, yeah, Round, yeah, Baby, yeah. right? Yeah, that's is he dead? Yeah, I think he's dead because he died the next day. You're not completely reliable on the live dead well, things. It's, it's, I get Boy it from George Twitter. Boy George is still alive. I get it from Twitter. Um, but yeah. We don't want to start a rumor on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> where did that start? Find out where that started. I'm going to sue them. <laughs> it wasn't us. It was a mistake. He's drunk. He doesn't know what he's saying. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, but there's... Prince, I mean, that's a that that was a that that's was a, a loss. One. Yeah, that was a big one. We lost a lot of people. What does um, Bowie, Bowie, Prince, yeah. George Michael, George? That was the dude I was talking about. George Michael. Careless Whisper has to be one of the classiest songs ever uh, released. Uh, see, I was never a for or against, but these are iconic songs. I mean, now we get. I don't even know what's popular now. I mean, I still think of like Bieber and Britney and like, that's atrocious music. I looked at some uh, photo this week of, I don't know, you know, it was some major event and there was like seven children in a row and the only one I knew was Harry Styles. I was like, no idea who that is. I have no idea who that is. No idea. No, no, no. That's Harry Styles. Right. He had, a cool, he had a cool suit on, like massive lapels down to here. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, people like that, right? I mean... They're, they've got such a massive following and they make so much money they don't care. 
Yeah, well, fair enough. If I was making that much money, I'd have cool lapels too. Skirt. If I was going out, someone invited me out somewhere, like, dude, you're going out tonight, I'm going to be in front of like thousands of people, I'll be like, I need some lapels. Get yeah. me a tailor and let's make some lapels that look good. Nah, let's yeah. make them better. I've, I've got to admit, I'm going to a Harry Styles concert. Are you? Yeah, I think in a couple of months. Get a suit, man. He's down here. Custom. Taking my daughter and a whole lapels. bunch of teenage girls to a... <gasps> Sucks. Are you just going to... Stand at the back of the bar and have a beer. Or... Yeah. Actually, Harry's got some good tracks, but there's going to be a whole heap of like but screaming it's the teenage girls. Girls, yeah. yeah, it's um, yeah. I'm just, I'll be there just with my shotgun pointed out all the boys. You need one of those back away. One of those shirts. Uh, what's the group? Dads. D A D D. Yeah, d- dad. What's that? Dads against daughters dating, <laughs> <laughs> and then this slogan underneath is. Shoot the first one, the word will spread. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go and get that. Yeah. I saw it on the internet somewhere. I'm sure if you Google them, you'll Google dad. Shout out to oh, dad. Hey. Oh, I'm the side. I got a couple more years, but then it's going to be like, I'm getting one of those shits. I'm getting a shotgun. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, it's one of the downside with, you know, being in America, there's more guns and people. Right. So yeah. You, you have to be very careful what you do on dates when you're a teenager because you know dad will pop out and blow your head off. I just, right? I honestly, I'm just surprised. This is a weird thing. This is what's weird about America to me is that you know everyone's got guns. Yeah. And you know that people are concealed carrying. Yeah. So even the people that you don't think have got guns yeah. have possibly got guns. Why are people, like you say, so aggravational to one another. If I was over there, I would be like, excuse me, sir, I'm just going to walk <laughs> to the door. I'm going to keep my hands like this as I walk to the door and then put my hand on the door handle and open the door and then proceed to my car. Is that okay with everyone? Thank you. Yeah. Type of, yeah. How the f- I, I think one of the things most people don't really <clears throat> uh, appreciate of Americans is um, we have a combined IQ of a crayon, right? So... Um, so we don't necessarily think through what we're doing. Um, so if somebody has a, a gun, another one has a bazooka, and I sure as shit, if you're in Texas, you're going to see a tank rolling down the road, yeah, well, right? I mean, yeah. I like uh, that about Texas. <laughs> well, and I, I was on the phone with my parents um, this morning because it's coming up to September 11th, which is a fairly big oh, yeah. big day for the neighborhood and stuff like that. Um, and uh, Of course, you're from New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, um, and... You know, my mother still, you know, asked me, where, where are you again? I'm in New Zealand. I've been here three years. What state is that in? I said, oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, we're going to have this commercial. Uh, so I said, don't, don't worry. I'm on the shared national computer. It's connected to the interweb, and it's my turn to give you a call. Right? We've had enough rain to keep our water wheels spinning to have electricity. And my mom's just buying this shit. Um, the only way to communicate with most Americans is through Fox News. Oh, right. That's yeah. and, and my parents are very much sort are of Are they Fox or MSNBC? They're so, definitely Fox. They're Fox. Right. Oh, yeah. So um, you know, they're they're the MAGA crowd. Yeah. So I said, Well, when you come here, I wouldn't wear the red hat. <sighs> oh, why not? Yeah. I said, Well, you've you've got the to get the, the M N Z G A hat. That's mm-hmm. the make New Zealand great again hat, right? Because yeah, yeah. they're going to really appreciate <laughs> Americans coming in and telling them what to do. Yeah. Right? That's good advice. That's I mean, sound advice yeah. for your parents. Yeah. It's a way to get inheritance quicker. Yeah. yeah. I like that. I can see why you're the favorite child. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to, and I still do this, um, <clears throat> send them a little, probably less so now because, well, they're hard to get a hold of, but I used to send them Putin dolls. Right, and 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 Trump toilet paper. So every time they went and did their business, <laughs> they were connected to Mister T. Right, and and they I just wound them up. Right, and when I grew up, it was sort of really Cold War, anti-Russian. You know, nineteen eighties ice hockey. We beat the Russians, and then as I mentioned earlier, my dad got sick, so I I sent him a text. I said it's polonium two ten. <laughs> I was in London at the time, right? We had literally no word of lie. People dropping like flies because the bloody Russians are just poisoning everybody, right? And then my dad's like, you're fucking right. It's the Russians. I said, you got to disconnect everything from the internet. They're coming for you. And it's, it's Red Dawn. Yeah. You better check that pacemaker in your heart, man. 
<laughs> they've got the kill switch. <laughs> <laughs> they've got the codes. <laughs> they've hacked it. It's well, those bots. They definitely have it now because they were crawling all over mar lago Imagine right? if you did have the bot to his pacemaker and be just like, we're just going to give it a slowdown for a second. Like, oh, that fucking <laughs> bot. Putin, quit it, man. Putin's watching through the ring camera, just he, giggling. He oh, just turn it back on. Turn it back on. He Let him go. He's shit. all right. He loves that shit. We've got to let him have a giggle because the war's not going particularly well for him at the moment. So let him have a giggle. Yeah, I mean... You think he would have learned from the Americans, right? Americans, probably the most powerful, you know, army in the world, certainly the most funded. They invade a desert and they can't even dominate. Yeah. This yeah. dude invades a neighbor full yeah. of pretty rough Eastern European dudes yeah. and dudettes, of course, and who actually fight back. And he's probably like, what's this about? <laughs> That's the thing. Like that, that fight just starting there is, you know, it's a pretty f hard fight. You've got neighbours fighting one another. Long history. Yeah. Yeah. A number of people in Ukraine, uh, you know, are, to all intents and purposes, Russians. A lot of people on the eastern, bo uh, western border of Russia will be, to all intents, Ukrainians. Yeah. That's all just a weird environment to be having a fight. And just a, you know, like the Russian... It, it, Whenever it's going to be a Russian fight, it's just going to be artillery. So it's just going to be, right, we, let's see if we can work out the structure of the city. We'll start from this corner. Yeah. Okay, we're over here. We don't care. We've got a plan. We're destroying all the city blocks over here. Yeah, but if you see them rolling in, it's like that board game Risk, right? Have you ever played that board game? It's kind of world yeah. domination. And that's like, I think Putin invented it. I heard that on Twitter too. Um, but you see their tanks rolling in, and they're a single file line across yeah. a bridge. And I'm not a military uh, strategist by any stretch, but I, you know, I do have a Nerf gun, and I I can appreciate where anyone's in single file line. You just need to blow up the first one and the last one. Mm -hmm. But they they didn't do that. I mean, but so the Russians were able to get in, then eventually cleared up the Russians like this is pretty dumb what we're doing and hightailed it back out of there there's a guy on YouTube called Perun who I would love to get on the show mm. and and talk to he's an Aussie guy who's had a background in I want to say military logistics mm. so if, you, if you're listening Perun if this somehow gets to you please man come on the show I'd love to talk um, he does the best weekly podcast summaries and at the moment he's doing them on Ukraine mm. and he's coming from this economic logistics yeah, yeah. financial background <clears throat> so the the news he's giving you is very clearly laid out in solid economics you know like so he does he does lots of good yeah. you know comparisons on like he says um like the the, the Ukraine or something or the or Russians um you know, they're, they're all they're all bling. They got you know, they got don't have enough training here. They don't have enough. They've conscripted people, and therefore they haven't gone through this program of training. You know, yes, they've got thousands of tanks sitting around, but those tanks, if they haven't been maintained, they've had the copper wire stripped out of them, so they're actually effectively useless to you. Um, things like okay, if you're starting to conscript people, well, that means they're not working the active workforce. You're not taking taxes off them, so you're now getting yourself into a cycle of dependency upon okay, how long can we run this war for? And starting to get ideas about that. Yeah. It's, it's and I just feel good. bad for the Russian people. And when you get oh. McDonald's pull out, I mean, that is a national event. Yeah. McDonald's shut up shop. But within, what, six hours, you get McDonald's. Yeah. I mean, it's brilliant. Yeah. You know? So they don't seem to have missed a beat, right? Yeah. I Look, I don't know. Obviously, what we see and get here is Western propaganda. There's a lot of Ukrainian propaganda coming out. There's a yeah. heap of it. I feel for the... I feel, and I get, I feel, you know, not that I'm boots on the ground, but of the sources I'm watching, Twitter bots, <laughs> the bots are telling me that the last couple of days, there's been some big pushback from the Ukrainians against the Russians in some areas. Prior to that, there's been a lot of just slow creeping yeah. Russian progression. Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know what we get here. Like, I, don't know what, I don't know where Putin's head's at. Is he going, yep, we're actually starting to get worried we're running out of shit. We're running out of computer chips. This is going to end badly for me. How do I find a way out of this? Or is he still like, I've got another 7,000 of those old tanks. I'll throw that at you for another year. And then we'll start to get worried yeah, about things. I yeah. think he's going to wait for the winter, right? The Germans will cave because they need to be warm. 
the Americans that's, will get bored. That's the thing. Well, know. that's the thing. The only, that, you've got to remember that the only reason that the Ukrainians are still in this fight is the massive amount of Western support they've mm. been given. If they weren't getting the billions and billions and billions of dollars in NATO weaponry, that it would be over by now. Yeah. But I, I don't actually think I'm a I'm a subscriber to John Mearsheimer. That his idea that I don't think that Putin was actually planning on trying to take all of Ukraine. I don't think that was his intent at the start. I really think it was basically, look, NATO, stop training, yeah. stop funding the Ukrainians, get out of my backyard and we'll be okay. Yeah. If not, you're he's not been gonna... saying that since he's he been saying that forever. For 20, 30 years since he's been in the seat. Yeah. He's, in fact, he wanted to be friends with Americans and it was, it was sort of the Americans who said, nah. Yeah. Nah. Yeah, well, we're going to keep on pushing and we're pushing Americans, and pushing right? and pushing. Yeah. You know, um, but yeah, I think Putin did misplay his hand because... I think he certainly appreciates his, his particular aspects of the government, like the intelligence agencies sit in the executive branch. So they do what the president wants, right? So CIA, NSA, mm. et cetera, et cetera. And these are crucial because it's all about that intelligence. They have their own military arms, et cetera. But with Biden there, right, and Biden controlling the CIA, it's a very different adversary to say trump trump didn't even trust mm. his own intelligence yeah. services yeah. right and he he undermined them he still yeah. has documents in his you know florida flat yeah. you know his golf course and he's doing anything and everything he could to undermine you know american interests whether you agree with him or not but putin would have been better off you know attacking when trump was in in town right versus biden but then again the, the, the counter to the narrative to that though is that Trump was very anti-NATO. Trump was like, you guys are taking money of us. We're the largest player here. You guys aren't contributing. Your Germans think that you're yeah. all good because you're taking all this Russian oil. It's a bad idea. And, you know, for that reason, Putin's probably less likely to cause a stir with Trump because he's like, well, the American president's on my side. He's trying to get NATO yeah, out of here. Fair. I think Trump was just looking for money because the Mexicans weren't paying for this wall that keeps falling yeah. down. And, you know, Trump was keep handing out money to Europeans to protect effectively Europe, Europe. Yeah, and yeah, indirectly the U.S., and they weren't paying their fair share. Trump well, just wanted money. It's a weird It's a weird thing. I mean, strategically, you look at America, global superpower. <clears throat> Russia, not a global superpower. Punch above their weight and do really yeah. well, but yeah. not on anywhere on the same level. China, emerging global superpower. Oh, yeah, the ones that's, where the, that's where their focus should be now. They should be like, mm, sorry, Ukraine, look... How, Let's just stop this fighting here because we really need to go focus on what's going on in China. There's a yeah. massive navy that's being built. It's a massive army that's being built. Yeah, and they yeah. think in 100-year 100 100-year cycles, right? I mean, Xi Jinping's going up and for a re-election this week, I believe it is, up to the People's Republic to, to re-elect them in. But the Chinese are brilliant. They're amazing people. They think in 100-year yeah. sort of multi-generational policies. They're just... it's yeah. and And they don't really care they're the ones like when they go out and hack places and steal things they tell people about it because mm. they don't have to worry about it internally they're still locking people down with covid yeah you know half the country's burning with the the climate change stuff and they don't care they really don't care their people don't have the same free speech the covid thing in china is weird i want that i figure that must be because jinping came out and said we're going to have zero COVID. And now that he can't have zero COVID, he's got to be seen to be hard cracking down on it still he to not change, lose face. Might change when he gets, you know, presumably gets reelected, right? He, yeah. He controls the party. And if you go up against him, you're you're not going to survive. That's, yeah. That's very true. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think the real people in, in the U.S., the people in the know of which I'm not me, but I read on Twitter a lot, <laughs> um, they're more concerned about China. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah, they've they've got to be. they've got to be long term. They've got to be. Yeah, but I'll, I'll tell you, it's um, you know, talk about nations and and even, you know, I've I've had the opportunity to live in lots of different people, and and you get lots of different views of different things, right? And and it's really amazing. It, for me, it was like my birthday all over again when I, I left the U.S. when I stopped reading. Fox News, and mm. I actually, you know, learned how to spell color. It had to say you. <laughs> I didn't know that. 
you know, and you learn proper English. So, I mean, that's one thing that holds back Americans is they don't really have a wide view. They've got Good. one or two views. Yeah, I guess I've never been to America, but I can imagine that happen. If you are the you know, a global player like that, you probably tend to become quite focused on yourself. Yeah. You know, you, the whole West, the whole Western world's entertainment is kind of led and directed by what comes out of America. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, lots of countries are like that. I mean, I remember what was it, what eight nine months ago when Russia first in, uh, invaded Ukraine, and like you, I read lots of different newspapers and try and get a, a view and I. I get into the Herald and they're talking about the Wellington protests. I'm like, Jesus Christ, it's fucking World War Three out there. Russia actually invaded another country. Mm. And you're talking about Wellington protests, right? And then you, they put up videos of Wellingtonian protests who knock down barriers. Yeah. And they pick them back up <laughs> and they stay on their side of the barrier. Yeah. We need to teach Kiwis how to protest properly. I mean, we can storm capitals. <laughs> we can overthrow governments almost. <laughs> I mean, there's a few things that we can teach the Kiwis. It's interesting, though, you look around the world the last year or so, the number of Western countries that have had protests on level, large levels. A lot of it's been suppressed, too. You know, you look at, in, in Denmark, the farmers' protests. Yeah, yeah. You look at the farmers' protests and yeah. truckers in Canada. Yeah. Getting it pretty heavily suppressed there wasn't a whole lot of that in the mainstream no. media but yeah. that was pretty full on yeah you know? well and i love it what was the speaker of the house for new zealand said you know what you know how we really get these protesters out we play music <laughs> right i'm gonna play baby shark <laughs> over and over and over again <gasps> i mean that is a fucking strategy right there yeah but he picked the wrong track that everything was already a brain worm yeah. in everyone's head. It's like, mm, we're, already, we're used yeah, to this. I'm numb. We, we dealt with this. Yeah, yeah. I'm numb. And then what do you go for? Barry Manilow. So that's just a fun <laughs> choice of music. Where's, you know. And, and then we have, who's this Bishop um, Brian dude running around? Um, he's Brian doing, Tamaki. Yeah, he's yeah. doing some more protests. And, you know, I'm all so, free, free speech. Yeah. Man, that's cool. But don't drive your tractor on the one bridge that connects my house to my work. Right, uh -huh. and, and and they get they're walking on this bridge, driving tractors on this bridge, and I'm just like, dude, they can't even add a cycleway to this fucking bridge. And this is the one way in or out. Do you have to do this? Do a flotilla like yeah. Greenpeace or something like that, but don't don't attack my bridge. Cause, <laughs> you know, now I'm not a fan. <laughs> right? You've got to be very careful with a protest, don't you? That you don't put offside people that might support you. By protesting in the wrong way, by like blocking them getting exactly. from one half of the city to the other half. Exactly. Makes an impact, definitely. Gets on the news, so it gets you some airtime. But are there then a large number of people that go, you know what, I probably would have supported you because I'm kind of with you on the idea, but that was really fucking annoying. Well, it was. Yeah. And, and the best are where the tractors come up from from south somewhere. I, I haven't been, been past the bridge, actually, so I don't know what's down south. But this tractor comes up, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? tractor and this kiwi dude next to me goes oh that's our national pastime i thought it's rugby rugby he goes no it's tractoring I'm like well i was going pretty slow on the motorway i'd never seen one before right because living in civilization here in the cbd i didn't appreciate their other uh, vehicles mechanical yeah. vehicles out there yeah i heard about them yeah. big apparently big back wheels on them yeah not great for burnout surprisingly but well, i know well, yeah but and but yeah, all that sort of stuff's interesting, right? You want to try and been, avoid some of that. There's been a lot going on in the last year. Uh, was it Sri Lanka? Yeah, it's still going government on. Government overthrown. Yeah, bankrupt. Pakistan's technically bankrupt again. Well, Sri Lanka, they, they got caught up in the whole um, uh, climate change thing where yeah. the Prime Minister made the decision we're not buying any fertilizer because the nitrogen's bad. So, yeah. okay, our crops dropped by 30% in our production. Yeah, yeah. Now everyone's hungry. Yeah, but then they they take all the money or was that Malaysia? Yeah. I mean, all of their fairly high levels of corruption. Corru yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, Malaysia's had some big corruption. They had that big, what was that big thing a couple of years ago? That, uh, uh, A1? IMD, IMDB. Yeah. IMD, yeah. Yeah. Like trillion dollars of payout. Yeah, to basically asset, corruption or asset management. Yeah. Taking people's money and sort yeah. of putting it in their own pockets, which is, well, not too dissimilar to us New Yorkers. We just call it Wall Street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you have you got any crypto? Have you invested in crypto? No, I don't. Um, no, I'm not a not a crypto dude. I did like two years ago, 
and it was tracking up nicely. And then I think I've now got, I don't know, 25% of what I put in. <laughs> yeah, see, I learned very early on. Um, lots of my friends are still in that space. Wall Street, various different uh, fixed income and debt capital uh, markets. Um, and the one thing they told me very early on is that, you know, they go three years of hell, 18 hour days, not doing anything but sort of photocopying and typing, but you, you're really learning. And they come out of that phase and they sort of tell me to don't ever, ever, ever buy shares. Yeah. Ever. You will never know as much information that I know. I, yeah. And as it turns out, they not only know the information, they rig the game. Yeah. <laughs> right? So. And now I think a lot of it's bots to doing the deals at lightning yeah, speeds. The flash trading stuff. That's yeah. not everything in the market. But, um, and they obviously the whole Robin Hood moment where, you know, yeah. the common man and or person, I should say, you know, worked against Wall Street yeah. by GameStop. And yeah. Now Bed Bath and Beyond and all these things. And the traders are like, this is what? the dumbest trade in the world. Yeah. This can't be but, happening. But the mass power and of the social media of the, and of yeah, of social media, and if you get as enough crayons together, all these mm. people with IQs of crayons, if you get enough together, you can really push against the system. Yeah, right? that's the thing. Group the power of groups. That's exactly. the whole identity politics that's going on these days. You yeah. know, like make a group and then pit that group against another group. Right. And if you want to sit right in the middle and be an activist there, you got yourself a job. Just got to keep that going, you know? Keep exactly. That, fight going. Ideology is the biggest motivator in human, yeah. humankind. I mean, it's Nazi Germany, MAGA, Brigade, you Should, know, Greenpeace. Uh, there's all, it's all idea, ideologically driven. There's, there's another guy on YouTube I want to mention, um, Ryan Chapman. Mm. Check out his videos. Mm. So good. Like, yes, you know, if you just want the background on you know, what what is socialism what is nazism you know were, mm. were, were, were the italians or were the germans really fascists yeah. like, just great stuff really well presented really cool guy again he's just he's one who's just just gone um just become monetized like i know he's got maybe 60 videos up or something he must have just hit his thousand subscriber mark because yeah, yeah. i'm starting to hear ads turn up now on his on his um videos. yeah and that's the thing I, uh, and i struggle to see where New Zealand fits in that, right, sort of phase. There's, I mean, capitalism is the dominant economic model yeah. in the world. Everyone subscribes to it. Yeah. Um, and New Zealand certainly subscribed to it. But then we have sort of political models that are more sort of socialesque, yeah. socialist type of policies. Um, and there's this real sort of butting of heads because you really can't have both. You I really can't have both. I, I don't think you can have a pure socialist government and have capitalism, but I think it's moved on. Like the democratic socialists, which is what just seemed that yeah. is. You're right. I think they recognise, even China now. And this is the challenge for um, Xi Jinping, is that he has he's said, shit, I've got to let the country grow. We've got to embrace some capitalism. But if he does that he gets the problem he gets with like people like jack ma yeah, yeah. where suddenly this dude's got a whole heap of money and profile and can start saying things against me oh jack you're just coming back for re-education for a few months yeah, yeah. so and that's the thing he's got yeah because that, that that communist party only works when they have ultimate control and no challenge once yeah. you open up for capitalism the classes rise people have got money and opinions yeah you're over yeah yeah, yeah. they don't really yeah, they they kind of work against each other. Oh, they they were opposed. In so, every facet, not just political, but economic. Socialism is just is opposed to capitalism. Yeah, but I, but like you said, capitalism's everywhere because it works mm. because it actually does. It works. Yeah. You know, well, I think that yeah, the social the socialist was saying Marx was saying, oh, what's going to happen is that capitalism is going to continue. And everyone is going to get poorer and go to starvation apart from a few rich people. Yeah. But that's not what has actually happened. When you look over the last 150 years, you know, 150 years ago when Marx was writing that stuff, the average life expectancy in like Liverpool and Manchester was 15, 15 and 17, yeah. 15 and 15, 17 and really? stuff. Yeah, it was like really young average age. Right. It was ridiculously low. And Socialism didn't come into power and change that. Capitalism came in yeah. and has changed that. Yeah. You know? Wealth creation. Everyone got it. Everyone, except for the bottom. There's always the, 
this normal distribution. You have the top 1%, the bottom 1%. Yeah. The bottom's always the bottom. It's always the bottom, but the the baseline has lifted yeah, even a, f- for the bottom. Yeah. You know, Everyone has sort of come up in that yeah. respect. Yeah. Because you go, yeah, you, you probably, you think, it's, yes, I mean, there are people who are living in cars and things like that. But, you know, but I think at a baseline, when you look at people in the lowest economic mm-hmm. classes, if you were to go back 100 years, you know, the the level is still elevated, like the ability to get you know to, to get clothing, access to clothing, and things like that, access to food and electricity, and things like that, we, uh, are more prevalent now for yeah. everyone. Yeah, and what well, we value things very differently now. Back then, it was making things. Most Western countries don't make much anymore. Yeah. Um, what our value creation is in all those intangible assets, something like seventy percent, sixty-seven percent of of global value created every year is an intangible asset, asset, right? This is financial markets and software and IP. It's, and it's IP. It's all that stuff. And there was a great analogy, I think a Ted talk in, in Auckland and I should attribute it to the guy, but I forget his name, but he, he made a great analogy, you know, main freight, 7,000 people, 195 million in revenues, phenomenally successful company, gotten even more so after, after the pandemic. Um, and a massive asset base, about a hundred million. I'm using round figures, worth you know about half a billion U.S. dollars. Um, so about a billion Kiwi. And then you have another company with nine employees, zero assets, and zero revenue, mm. worth over a billion U.S. dollars. Mm. That's Instagram. Mm. I mean, that's and that's where value is created and things yeah. that we can't see or yeah. feel or touch. Yeah. Right, because there's but, physical limitations and how many trucks she can have on the road. Yeah, how many drivers and trucks, all that stuff. Yeah, that's that the the power and value of influence. Yeah, yeah that's what the term influences. You know, Instagram yeah. influences yeah. people who you can look at and see and go, oh, I want to do what they're doing. I want to do what they. I want to see what they're seeing. I want to eat what they're eating. I want yeah. to be where they're being. That kind of thing that influences power. Yeah, these these. I don't even know what that is anymore. I'm I'm still trying to figure out Twitter. I Instagram. Um, I don't know what it is. I feel physically unwell scrolling <laughs> through Instagram, not because of the content. The content's sanitized on Instagram. It's something to do with the scrolling of their images. Right. Yeah, it's, which has a sort of a, a physiological effect. Twitter, which is the same, scroll from the bottom and scroll up. Doesn't have it. I don't know why. Something to do with the words versus just images moving, I think. Like maybe it's even like a car travel nausea sickness. It's just a whole, you see a whole scene and the whole scene moves. We're here, you're watching words and so you're used to words moving. I'm not sure why, but it's a, I, I've spent very little time on Instagram purely because I physically don't enjoy the scrolling. Right. Yeah. It's weird, yeah. Eh? Maybe a carpal tunnel of the thumb. Don't, or no, that would affect both it and the Twitter bots. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but um, going going back, I've only been here sort of three years, and I'll, I'll tell you it was a quite an interesting experience getting into New Zealand. There's a whole lot of things you need to do, right, to get a visa, and it was much easier for me because my wife's a, a Kiwi, right? Mm-hmm. And she was able to sail right through. In fact, they threw her a parade, right, because <laughs> they're not used to Kiwis wanting to come back home. So she had confetti and fucking everything. It was brilliant, and I'm back here. You know, I'm, I'm in London doing paperwork and right, medical exams and all that and then interviews, right? And they have to ask you all sorts of questions. It's very similar when I did became a, a British subject. You know, citizens, we're all subjects now. Um, and, and you have to answer these questions, right? And these questions are across the political spectrum, cultural spectrum. Um, and I, you can study, you buy a pamphlet like a driving license, Right. And I'm getting ready and I'm studying this and I'm in this room, you know, crazy Malaysian guy to the right, you know, an Indian lady, five year old Chinese kid behind me. We're all wanting to get in to New Zealand. Right. And they ask these questions in sort of random order. And I was pretty nervous, even though I studied, because it's sort of the last hurdle Mm. to get into New Zealand. And they asked the first question, you know, who's the prime minister? Right. And I'm like, no, easy. Got this right. right. Jacinda. Right, just into our turn. I got it wrong. The right answer was Richie McCall. 
And and the Malaysian guy next to me, he's got a shit eating grin on his face, and he just wrote the goat. The (laughs) proctor, the proctor's like we would accept either (laughs) Daniel Carter or Richie McCall. So the goat passes. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, all right, I got this because the next one was, you know, a cultural one, a political, cultural, very random. And so, what is the national sport of New Zealand? Well, given the last answer. You I know, know this one. You've got is, this one in the bag. Rugby. Yeah. It's rugby. Got to be. Awesome. Proctor goes around, looks, I get it wrong. The Indian dude next to me is putting on Velcro gloves. I'm like, what's that guy doing? And he's got a shit eating grin on his face, too. And the proctor says the right answer is sheep shagging. Like, this guy's fucking into it here. Next, I'm like, that's, I'm over two. <laughs> right? I am absolutely over two. Meanwhile, the Chinese kid behind me has built five sets of Michael Jordans. Right? He is, like, I thought he's going to be a concert pianist, but he was, you know, part of Nike. Production. Right, he's getting in. But anyway, I get through. I finally, um, I finally get the grade, and I got like 30% right. But I sailed right through because as it finds out, anyone with above 80 or 90 percent of of correct answers have to go into another room. And on this room and I'm just walking right by. I'm like, how did I pass with, you know, subpar grades? And they go in this room and on this door, there's initials TP as I come to learn tall poppy. So they take all the smart people in this room and they just slag them off. They cut them right back down to size until they become Kiwis. And then they let them into the country at that point in time. So it's it's a very tough way to get into the country. Um, really hard questions. So anyone out there looking to study for it, I'm I'm happy to help educate you. I think it's a good plan to make people work to yeah. get into the country. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to let just anyone in. You know, like exactly. Some S- and certainly not people who are smart to high. come in feeling smart. Yeah. Right? We need to cut everyone down to size. Otherwise, we just end up being like America. We just let everyone come in that's smart, feeling smart. And you're like, no. you got to understand the tall poppy syndrome. I get it. In fact, there are aspects of it that I like because you don't want to be, you know, Americans running around with all the arrogance, all the money, all the success. <laughs> I mean, God forbid we had that, right? <laughs> but, yeah, Americans don't do it right either. Um, there's no doubt about that. I mean, but the good news is, even after this podcast, it is more than possible. In fact, I would suggest probable. I am the next president of the United States of America. Do you think that, um, do you think that Trump will run again? Ah, I think, I think Trump will do whatever it takes to stay out of jail. Do you think that Ron DeSantis will run? I'm pretty sure that whoever runs will not be good enough to be president of the United States of America from the Republican Party. I mean, look, you know, sort of after I'd left, we had George Bush, like the the younger one. I mean, he was an alcoholic, cokehead. I used to party, yeah. Ran a, a baseball team into the ground, right? And he was president. And I'm thinking, I'm overseas. I got a real shot at this. If they elect that dude. And we got Trump. We have philandering, lying, cheating. I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely in. You can do this. I am definitely in. You don't actually need to know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Right? So, yeah, DeSantis could probably do it. But I reckon I got a shot. <laughs> Who do you think the Democrats have put in? Who do you think is going to be there? I oh, lose So the Democrats, this is why no one votes for the Democrats, because they're losers. They don't put, I mean, Barack, smart dude. He was the only sort of proper dude they put forward. He was a very compelling candidate. Yeah. Yeah. Europeans loved him. Americans hated him. But, you know, you know, but that's just the way it works. Americans hate just about everybody. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I struggle to see who the Democrats are going to put in that will beat DeSantis. I, I think DeSantis has got a really good shot. If he goes for it, yeah. just, just, just with conservative America, the more mainstream, the more centrist American, I think you'll get all that. They get all the Republican vote. I think you get some of the Democratic centrist vote, probably a lot of the independent voting. So it comes down to then the Democrats needing to put in someone to really get the Democratic base. And if they really get the Democratic base, they're putting all those other people aside and pushing them to DeSantis. I, I, yeah. I, I thought maybe a, like a year or so ago, I thought maybe Beto O'Rourke could have done it, but then he seems to have just not 
fired? You know, oh, I think, yeah. I mean, I don't know. And and at the end of the day, you know, both parties, and it probably happens in this country. I've only seen a, one election sort of cycle, but both parties go to their extremes, right? And you do that for about a year. You become that selected candidate, and then you have to come towards the, the middle, middle yeah. right? So everything you did for that first year of, you know, wanting to to hang people of color or you know. Um, want to save every tree and shut down every oil rig all that stuff comes back to bite you for the real people that vote those yeah. who you know don't care about the extremes yeah. um, but the extremes are dominating in the US it is the start of a sort of civil war if you will right? yeah the, well there's a, that just that term gets used a lot online on twitter oh, by the oh, bots yeah. mm. twitter's great but yeah. twitter's very polarizing it's just set up to be polarizing the, but there's that um, great comment from Mike Tyson where he says something along the lines of, you know, all these people on social media just have forgotten that you can't say things like that without getting punched in the face. Yeah. Well, yeah something to all those words. But it was a good comment. comment. It's like, yeah, you can just say whatever you want to that person because you don't know who they are. You're on the other side of the planet. You're never going to see them. So you say whatever you like. That's what you know, Twitter incentivizes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, I love watching the, the video. So I think his name's Jordan. Clapper or Clopper, if I pronounce his, his name wrong, he, he does like, um, he goes to these MAGA parades and he interviews people and he points out the sheer lunacy, hypocrisy of their belief system and what's going on in, in the real world. And they're just great videos. But it really goes to show that the lack of education matters. Mm. And I'm not just talking two plus two is six because mm. we all know it's fucking six. Twitter said it was six. But it's it's people just stop asking questions yeah right even even my my daughter's school they're they're getting taught and i'm 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 not picking fights with any school or anything like that they get taught about climate change i'm like awesome why aren't they teaching the counter argument yeah i'm not picking one side over the other but if they keep going one way you yeah. start to lose the ability to critically think yeah. and eventually you fall in the same trap that's the that everyone else is. That's in. the thing. That's the challenge with all, all the social media platforms at the moment and the mm. censorship. Mm. Like, yeah, okay. Obviously, yeah, all the yeah, all those social media platforms are, are the major ones. Twitter, Facebook, all that are pretty left leaning. Like they on all sh- academia is left leaning for the most part. Yeah, right? but but just shutting down that conversation is a, is a problem. Yeah. It's not a it's not a it's not a great idea. It's not. It's not supporting free speech, which I think you want to be doing. Yeah. It's like booting Trump off Twitter. I'm like, I'd love it if Trump was on Twitter. I'd love it to just be listening to the whatever the shit it is that he's saying. You know? Yeah, but the downstream effects, and this is partly why Americans don't leave the, the U.S., because the world's flat. <laughs> They'll fall off <laughs> the edge of California <laughs> into the abyss, right? And these people can't critically think. And even when you go and scientifically uh, prove it to them, Right, and teach them the science and how maths works and, and yeah. show them the world is round, they create their scientific magic to counter it. This is, again, this is Ryan Chapman who's doing a really good um, a video on why people believe things that aren't true. Yeah. And it was just that the the memes, the ideas mm. themselves are so have become have, there's so many ideas out there competing for our attention yeah. that the ones that are that are evolved and are the and fittest the and the breakfast beer. and the most attractive ideas and concepts, whether they be true or not, are the ones that appeal to us and people will latch onto them because they're an attractive idea. For some reason, you know, for some people, the flat earth idea is something that really appeals to them and just fills the space for them. And so they latch onto it. Now, the fact that it makes them feel good is what makes it appealing, not that it is based in truth. It doesn't have to be, which is why people believe things that aren't true. It's, it's that whole strongly. ideology. And this is where, you know, everyone can, you know, give Trump a high five. He gets this. Yeah, he's a smart guy. He gets he's this. Not, he's not, he's not the brightest bulb, but he's he not knows, the dumbest tool in the shed either. He knows how he knows how people work to a large extent. I mean, he, he kept that show of his going successfully for, what, 15 years or something? Yeah, exactly. But he but also said, what was it, not 90, easy 93, 94? Um, around that period of time, you know, when he was asked multiple times, you're going to run for president. And one of his responses was, if I were to run for president, I'd run as a Republican. 
Because they're idiots. Yeah. And I, he's right. Well, yeah. Look, I, um, who knows? If I don't know if he said that or not. If he did say it. He did. He did he say did. it. I, I get the time wrong. But, um, don't know if it's 93, 94, but yeah, it was around that period. Uh, at least Twitter told me anyway. But there are, this is the thing. There's If you just promote the right message, a bunch of people will support that and will follow that. That's yeah. why people have got different religious beliefs and different yeah. political beliefs. And you look at someone and you're like, they're completely polarized. How can the two of yeah. you see these things differently? Right, and, and we see that no more so in, in sort of religion. And there's there's a number of things in New Zealand occasionally in the, the front page and everyone goes to these big old churches, right? And they give their money to these yeah. churches. These people generally have deep beliefs, but not deep pockets. Mm -hmm. And the pastor or bishop or whatever yeah. is rolling around in a Turns up his roller, yeah. He's like, fucking dude, there's one Bugatti in the country and that dude's got it. Don't you Where do you think see? your money's going? Yeah. It's not saving whatever you think you're saving, your soul or the children next door. Yeah. You're a con artist. Yeah, oh, oh, clearly. Look at some of those, you know, those American dudes who are just multi millionaires mm -hmm. on TV. They're the worst, man. Yeah. They're the worst. Because they get their own infomercial channels. They sell their yeah. their holy waters and all this sort of shit. But, but that's, people buy it. Hey, that's the thing. People people yeah, buy it. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's 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 the game. It's um and the only way you counter that is teaching people to think. Right, and and being educated is important, and not, and again, it's not classical education of mass and literacy. It's just learning to ask questions and challenge and why. It's a, and that's not really accepted in it, in many educational institutions. It's a it's a thing you got to teach your kids to do to yeah. think to look at both yeah. sides, but it's a tough thing to do. And again, it, it, depending on what news channel you land in, yep. like for for, yep. for me. A couple of years ago, you know, I was watching way more MSNBC than I should have. Mm. Now I step back and look at it with a more balanced view. And I'm like, Jesus, half of that shit. I can't believe I was yeah. given it the time of day. Yeah. But if that's where you kind of land, because that's when I, it was because a couple of years ago that I actually started to get interested yeah, yeah. in American politics. Yeah. And so I just I started watching some MSNBC more than Fox. I was like, Fox, this is ridiculous. But it was very difficult to begin with for me to go, oh, my God, MSNBC is just as ridiculous as Fox. Yeah, yeah. You know? they, they all are. And I think, you know, going back to school, I remember, you know, when you go and write your papers, you'd have to have multiple references. And yeah. They, and they, we didn't have Wikipedia back then. Yeah. Right? You actually had to go to the library. Yeah. Right, and he had a, a couple of books. Usually, you made mm -hmm. up the names of the some, books and the authors, and yeah. yeah. And you'd get some quotes right, some wrong, but it did, but you had to have a couple of different references. And and the same with the media today. You can't just be even just American news. Even if you chose CNN and Fox, you've got to go to American. You've got to go to British. You've got to go to Asian, yeah. Aussie, and Kiwi. South American, because you get different views, and then yeah. you can formulate your own view. Yeah, right. Um, but it's not just being able to formulate a well-rounded view; it's being able to have a discussion yeah. and agree to disagree. That's because okay. there's no more middle ground. Yeah, it's you're either you know black or white in the point of view. Yeah, yeah. And if there's no middle ground, that yeah, there's nowhere to go. And like you say, you got to learn to um, not hate the player. But hate the game, like, yeah. like, like someone's idea. And again, this, this Ryan Chapman thing on this on the memes and the why people attach to certain ideas, it was it was great for that understanding of okay, that person might have latched onto that idea that you don't agree with, yeah. but that doesn't define that person. That person could still be a good person, a, you know, a lovely person. So, like you say, you don't want to hate that person just because of that idea. You maybe understand why it might be that they've got that idea and hey, maybe even after time convince them to change or they might change your mind. But you've got to be able to have that to and fro in that discussion. Yeah, yeah. With people. And, 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 oh, I get this a lot. Like I said, I referenced my, you know, my parents are full into some of these, not conspiracy rabbit holes, but certainly into that sort of conservative, you know, what Trump says is, is true, even if it's yeah. asinine and illogical, they'll dismiss some of the really bad stuff. And Biden is the devil. It's there's no, mm. no having any discussion yeah. about any of that. And I'm sure that happens yeah. here as well. Um, but you just can't. I just don't have time for 
much for that I, anymore. I think what tends to happen too is that a lot of people will go, okay, I'm left or I'm right, and therefore the person who's leading the left, they're a saint, and the person who's on the right, yeah. they're clearly a demon. Yeah. Instead of going, oh, you know what, maybe I'm left, but the guy on the left isn't perfect, and the guy on the right isn't perfect, yeah. you know, or I'm on the right, our guy's not great, he's all right. But, yeah. And that's, I think, a lot of people just get emotionally involved in it. They're like, oh, I'm going to defend this guy because he's aligned with me. He's in my tribe. I'll defend him 100%. You guy's an asshole. Yeah. You know, he might be the leader, but he's actually a wanker. Yeah. It, but it's, you know, people don't sort of say that. Yeah. Well, I think the Kiwis do have it a bit better because it is a much smaller country. Um, you would think it's easier to polarize a smaller country, but I mean, Kiwis, just the culture just isn't like that. They don't have time for that. But my fear is that it can quickly be polarized, yeah. you know, with the, the Tamakis on oh. one side, Jacinda on this side, um, you know, the, this other party, you know, it can quickly get polarized because we're all human, well, fallible a... creatures at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, of course. Yeah, of course. And that's the, and a lot of this stuff is very complex and well engineered. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the media that comes out, yeah. pro propaganda from governments, yeah. um, you know, ideologies coming out of universities, they will. These are smart people who've thought these out and thought about how this will influence people and the way they think and act. And for the regular Joe Bloggs who's going to work nine to five and just reading the paper, it's like, well, what chance does he have to actually break out of that view or get another insight on things, you know? Like, yeah. I, I know a number of people, you know, particularly people a generation above us, who their news source is still the six o'clock news. Mm. That's that's it. You know, so that's what they see. What really? comes on the six o'clock news, they, they, that's all they get. And you talk to them about Twitter, like, oh, no, I don't have any social media or anything like that. And, you know, where do you go on YouTube and look on there? It's like, oh, no, I never would go on there. And you're like, okay, so where's your news source? Whatever I get told on six o'clock, and that's it. Yeah. So it's hard to, that's going to define what you're thinking. Yeah. It's certainly, but I'm I'm also a slight hypocrite because I'm not willing to pay New York Times or Washington Post, two of the best newspapers in the entire world that actually, and Guardian as well, they do lots of the investigative journalism, yeah. Panama Papers, things that have been in the news. I'm still not willing to pay for it, right? And I'd, if you're not willing to pay for it, these companies can't survive and you get stuck with Twitter bots. Yeah. You know? But do you, you 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 can look now at places like Substack, places like that, where they've yeah. got a lot of yeah, yeah. great investigative journalism. Yeah. But it's a it is a it is a mindset change. It's a mental effort it is. to to it's actually effort. Yeah, That's it is. what it is. It's it's mental effort. You yeah. actually got to get to the point to go. Okay, there are other news sources. Oh, and I, for some reason, I feel like I should invest the time to try and read them and go yeah. and find them. Yeah, that. Again, that takes time. You've got that first step of going, okay, there's not just this. Is what and it's, but it's also, you know, in the big difference with this old media versus new media, it is very old and very new. I mean, I remember sitting on the tube and I'd read the FT. If, if you've ever read the Financial Times, it is that fucking big, yeah. right? You open it up and obviously yeah. I'm not a, a big dude. I got dandy yeah. hands, right? But um, this paper is massive. And if you've ever been on the tube, right? It's six, seven, eight in the morning. There is not much room, right? You can't read the FT. It, it's actually just a regular sized newspaper. It's just, it's, it's just you're like quite dainty small. Hands. Yeah, it's just yeah, your hands. That's probably fair. <laughs> but then you get some new media. It's still a newspaper, but it's a metro. It's like that yeah. big. You can watch it. You can read it, like here. Yeah. And then this is where the the obviously the mobile factors of it. You, you can scroll. Yeah. But the FTs, the NYs, the Washington Posts, Guardians of the World, they're trying to do these apps but they're not really thinking in this new media mindset the, yeah. where it's consumable. So you said you didn't like the Instagram scrolling, yeah. which is fair. I, I don't yeah. so much either, but the generation is growing up with it. Our kids, oh, yeah. and they love it. Yeah. They're into it. Oh yeah. You know, they're not going to read this, you know, normal size paper, uh, which no. is big for a boy man like me, uh, but, um, and and they they they're, they're suffering. They're they're getting produced less and less. You know, I suppose you can still get a newspaper delivered to your door, but as a kid, that always happened. We always got a newspaper delivered. My grandparents, yeah. everyone did. Probably used to deliver one. Yeah, but nowadays, like I, as I say, I guess it happens. But I don't know anyone who gets a newspaper delivered to their door. No, 
That's yeah. all. So, yeah, we just don't read that format, which is a shame because it used to be fun to get the newspaper and sit down and actually hold it and, and read it. But it's so much more convenient now to just pick up your phone and read and be, pardon me, be able to jump from news source to news source. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's the thing. And you've got all these sorts of app aggregators. But, um, but what the new media doesn't have, it's journalism. Generally, it doesn't have people who are it's, skilled. I think it's like I think it's like music through the '90s, where once home recording was a yeah, possibility, yeah. everyone could make music, yeah. everyone can make news now. But there are people who are making good music from home, and people are making good news yeah, from home. Yeah. But you, that's the thing now. Now the noise level's gone up. Yeah, You've yeah. got to take the effort to go looking. Like I do it with music now. I still. I will occasionally put the effort in, and it's tough. Like, and by put the effort in, what I mean is, I want to go find new songs that I like and new artists that I like because I get bored with the stuff that I already listen to. Yeah. But sometimes it's like a two-hour job on a Saturday if I get some free time to sit down on Spotify and just go new song, listen to it, nah, new song, listen to it, nah, new one, new one, new one, new one. Oh, that's a good one. I like that one. Follow that path for a while. Yeah. But there's so much out there. Yeah. You've got to put that effort in to go looking for it. It's the same with with media and in journalism now. Yeah, yeah you got, like well, sub, sub Substack seems to be a good spot for independent journalism. Yeah. Where that's turning up there now. But again, it took me a while to find some good people on Substack and yeah. and actually go and read it there. And that's the thing is is even podcasts like this and. And others, everyone's trying to get noticed, and it's hard because you can get lost. In yeah. Noise, I call it Charlie Brown syndrome. Is the wah 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 wah? Cause yeah. Because I don't think people are willing to put in the effort. Yeah. Right. So, so you have to reduce the amount of effort to get that get noticed. Mm -hmm. Right. At, at the end of the day, and that's where new media and new ways of thinking excel. Is well, I'll just make it easy. Yeah. You yeah. know, just make it easy. Well, if you're going to buy something, one click, and yeah. then London is delivered within two hours. Yeah. I know, it's, am it's right? amazing. It's it's different. It just make it easy. Take friction out of everything, and people will use it. Yeah. Once they use it, they're locked in. Yeah. You can tell them anything, and they'll believe it. Yeah. Right? Twitter Twitter's a great example of that. It's why it's so popular, is that it's just that little factoid, that yeah. little nugget of news, you know, like yeah. something funny, something witty, yeah. piece of news, yeah. and oh, I've got it. I didn't have to Does put any trust, effort in. Yeah, trust yeah. killed the queen. Yeah, yeah. Is it? Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow, I've got it. I don't have to read further and go, exactly. does this make sense? Was there yeah. anything backing up? What were your sources? I'm yeah. just going to believe it. Yeah, you know? exactly. But as you say, I think people probably our age and maybe older, I feel as though going into the world of social media that I have some... Um, some filters that mm. my kids won't have. Like, a, you know, a website developer for years and years and years. Yeah. So I feel as though I can look at a website and go, well, that one looks a bit dodgy. Just the content doesn't feel right yeah. on it, you know. Whereas my kids, I imagine, will just go, we have no idea. That's just a website. It looks the same because they yeah. haven't. Oh, my daughter gets random text messages with links on it and clicks it. I'm like, yeah. it's a fucking Russians, mm. right? Um, but, yeah, they don't. And they're not being taught in schools. And when I go and speak to no. the parents and even teachers at schools, they have no idea what they're talking about. And why aren't they teaching kids like some new topics? Oh, they think, they, topics they, think they are. New, new they think they are, but they're not skilled enough. Do they teach kids at school um, to be a real estate agent? Because that's a, that's a really good job. Or just communicate. Well, yeah, but, yeah. Like I was taught at school, yeah. Oh, you go, you'd be an, an engineer or a doctor or a chemist or this sort of shit. It's like, yeah, some of these are untainable. Some of these are just boring as hell. Some of them I might want to do, but no one ever told yeah. me. And this is my own stupidity and yeah. just innocence as a child. That like at age eighteen, I just had never thought about being a real estate agent. I'm not yeah. saying I want to be one, but that's a job that you could do yeah. if you can communicate yeah. and you don't have a degree yeah. and you could be wildly successful yeah. and wildly successful. Exactly. You know, but they don't yeah. teach at school. Uh, well, and I think it's it's challenging. I've got lots of friends who are teachers, and I empathize with them. Mm -hmm. To do the most important job, arguably, in the world outside yeah. of medicine and get paid nothing for it. Oh, yeah. I mean, education. Of God. I, I agree 100%. There it, should be. It's a complete waste of the teacher's time. It's a, we, it's a waste of every person's potential. These little brains, these super exactly. fucking humans who exactly. are just being bored to death exactly. with stuff. Now, I'm not saying that's happening all the time, but I certainly feel like a, there's not the effort put into schooling 
There isn't an, an investment. And we were just out the other night and um, chatting, and she's quite a passionate teacher. That's mm. she loves what she does, and she's really frustrated because for the for well over a decade, New Zealand's been dropping down in OECD rankings. Standards, yeah. Assuming you put weight behind these standards. And long story short, she was saying, well, a lot of it is funding. Right? Yeah. We just don't spend money on this stuff, but that's not unique. What tends to be unique with many of the public schools in New Zealand is student led learning like yeah. it's just let's just let the kids be kids yeah. let's just mass is important literacy is important but uh, you know what let's let them be kids and everybody's like you know what that's actually a brilliant idea because i think most people would agree but then we letting kids be kids later in life yeah, yeah. and they forget that the world the whole world out there there's a hundred million chinese phds being produced yeah fucking every year same in India, that yeah, it is important and it, and and it's cool to be you, but you're going into a world who does not care. Yeah, you're going to a real world where there's they do real not problems. Care whether you're happy, no. Can you get the job done? In fact, they want you happy. Yeah. Keep fucking working because you're going to work for them. Yeah. Right. And anyway, she's she struggles. I'm like, well, why do you do it? And she makes actually good money being you know fairly high up in a particular school. Um, but it's, it's, it's an ethos up and down the country, which isn't unique to New Zealand. The U S has equivalent challenges, mm. probably at a, a far greater scale. Um, well, and it's just hard. It's impossible, but it's our kids that suffer. The, the U S though, in some States now are bringing in, you know, those policies yeah. of if you're a, 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 a black kid or something like that that yeah. you you know you don't have to do the exams yeah, or yeah. and I just can't see how that's not counterproductive for those poor kids because they're not going to be educated and pushed to do the exams and pass the exams and therefore have the qualifications to go on and, yeah, and succeed in the real world it's even worse it's and we see it in in professional life which we won't obviously talk too much because mm. everyone here is related and we're all going to lose our jobs if we go too far down the track. But um, we we see that that it's just unfair on the individual. Yeah. Right? Because you, you can see the masses, especially ignorant masses, to the conversation we had the other day. Oh, he only got that far because yeah, he's black. Exactly. She only became chief exec because she's a woman. Yeah. Because there is, there is, I believe, an element of reverse discrimination to break old models. But we don't need a potentially as much tokenism because it demeans yeah, exactly. the individual's you, accomplishment. You want whoever gets that role to get there on their exactly. merits, yeah. and you always want that to be the system. Now, if there's a challenge with certain people getting the education to be able to get the merit, that's where the focus yeah. needs to be here. Yeah. How do we fix that problem yeah. so that... All these people have this equal opportunity to become educated and learn skills and then go into the the race to see, okay, well, who's the best for that role? Yeah. You know, that's but that's it's it's just you, you, you're addressing the you're kind of addressing a symptom by just by tackling at this end yeah. rather than addressing a problem at this end. Yeah, but it's also it comes back to ideology. Yeah. Right? And and, and I'll pick on America because you know, I'm an American, I can probably get away with it. There's an ideology how I'm not clearly racist at at all but oh black people just don't work hard enough for all this no they just don't have the same number of opportunities because guess what white people keep all the flipping money mm -hmm. they know how to avoid all the taxes they know all this sort of stuff so when you create awesome policies maybe not that one that skips a few levels just to create the opportunity they're constantly getting beaten down in the american version of tall poppy yeah there's there's big cultural challenges yeah, massive but those but there's those cultural challenges extend um, not only separated by color, but just generally. Like if you're a, what's the area in America? I can't think of it. It's like the the redneck area, oh. where the the. But no, it's like I want to say the Appalachians, but I don't think that's right. Oh, well, that's in New York. So no, thanks. it's not there. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, no but that's, that's where it is. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think where it is. Um, but there are there are poor white kids. Like there's a whole strata of poor white kids, and yeah. they're and they're in the same situation. There, they don't have the education. Yeah. They're never going to get out of being this redneck culture. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. The, the cultural problem is a problem here for them. You know, that somehow that you need to address that cultural problem 
not, this is not dependent on the skin colour. These are white kids who are never going to make it anywhere, you know. Yep. It, it somehow address those cultural issues that lead their, them to be in a culture where you know, partying all the time is good or, you know, just wearing my wife beater and going out and getting drunk and making, I'm yeah. being ridiculously stereotypical here to make a point, you know, yeah, making no, moonshine and stuff is what we want to be doing all the time. It's like, yeah. no. Yeah. Oh, man, there's an amazing guy called um, Thomas Sell. Thomas Sell, he's about 90 now. He's, if I was going to vote for someone as a president, I'd vote for him. He's Is about, he like Joe Biden's age? Right? Yeah, he's older. Yeah. He's, a, he's a 90-year-old black economist mm. in the States. He is a, he is a dude. Mm. So he just has like looked at all the economic data about things like this, about you know, like cultural influences and how they cause mm. problems and that it's not the colour of your skin that causes these problems. No, in, in, in a lot of cases, no, it's yeah, not. It's, it's, it's actually just economics. Yeah, it's economics and, and culture. Yeah. Really and, and clever th guy. The thing that's got me quite quite bullish about this is big business have already started solving the problem because mm. capitalism back to our early conversation yeah. capitalism finds ways around this yeah. so you see companies audit firms like pwc tech companies like google are just saying you don't need a degree mm. we don't care no. if you're black white binary non-binary can you care. do the job really well we'll give you a job and, and even that they're saying i don't care if you can do it because I think what they're really saying is no one's teaching you how to do the jobs I have mm. or for the roles that don't exist uh, yet yep. in academics. So just come in get door. on board and we'll get you, we'll teach you. Right. Come in the door. They're really embracing all that, you know. But you do see that in the, in the tech field, in the hacking field. It's like, you know, the real black hats have turned white hat. And the, these guys aren't guys who went to university for five years and got no. a computer science degree. It's like these dudes were 14 just, years old and were hacking DNS routers in their sleep yeah. and they're fucking good naturally. They're just, and, and business finds a way around it. And, and maybe it started with solving a diversity problem by first recognizing they had one, but then they, they saw the economic benefit saying, actually, if we look and we get it, at, and we get a bunch of different people in a room, they come up with better outcomes than just a bunch of white dudes or middle class ladies or poor people, whatever. Diversity creates money. Well, look, yeah, but that's, but that's because it's, it's having a, a meritocracy effect. Yeah. You know, like it's actually, it's like if we're getting people in and they're all diverse and the outcomes of it are really good, yeah. well, that makes sense. Yeah, and you're right. The capitalist system is going to find that and make that work. There still is a meritocracy. I mean, New Zealand's just like everyone else. What, what was the, the Herald said? We're going to hand something down like a trillion dollars or something ridiculous, like 12 trillion. I didn't read the article because I don't pay for it, but um, <laughs> it's, it's basically inheritance. All the wealth that our parents, not maybe not ours because we're foreigners, you passed the same exam I did, yeah. um, you know, um, created all this money and property and stuff and they just hand it down to kids. So they're naturally wealthy. Mm -hmm. So there still is that meritocracy of that sort of wealth creation from that previous generation being handed down in that lineage and others being left behind. But access to opportunity but they, but even that will, isn't even, so much. Even that will sort itself out. Because you imagine, exactly, you get given five houses by your parents when they kick off when you're age eighteen. You're like, oh, I don't have to work. Well, what am I going to do? I'm just going to stand around, and drink booze all day, and, and do nothing. President of and, the United States of America. Yeah. And by the, <laughs> you know, and by the time I'm forty, I'm kind of a wreck. I've done nothing. Yeah, you know, blah 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 blah. Oh, I've sold off two of my houses because I made no money. You know, there's that natural economic yeah. balancing. Where, or on the other hand, you get five houses from your parents, and you go, okay, probably conservative and focused. I'm going to work hard at this yeah. and rent them out and look after them, maintain them. And when I'm finished, I've got 22 houses. So you're like, well, that's okay because you took that. You did something constructive with it. You worked yeah. at it. But that's that's the beauty of competition, capitalism. Yeah. And I'm not overly capitalist. Um, but it weeds out the weak. Yeah. Well, and it's, Look, it's, it's better than the idea of socialism where you say, well, we'll have a central bureau of people who will manage that wealth. Yes. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll just manage, we'll, like, we'll tell you what the prices yeah, yeah, need yeah. to be for everything yeah. and yeah. who you can trade with. Yeah. It's like, you can't manage that. You've got this 
organic evolved market system which naturally manages this itself. When you're trying to do that with a bunch of people, it's just it's not going to work. You're going to get it wrong, and you're going to end up with people starving. Like happens. It, it works for the people in that bubble making the decisions. Yeah. Right. I mean. We can point to religion. That's how religion taken has taken over the world, and the people that benefit are the ones that, in the church, yeah. um, at the top of various churches or various religious institutes. And we see that in other scenarios. But yeah, capitalism, I think what we've learned is that some of our, our thoughts of laissez-faire capitalism, or laissez-faire economics, I should say, and free market capitalism is just utter bullshit. That market's might be efficient they're not always intelligent right mm, yeah so we can't just let them run right yeah, oh yeah look at greenspan open up the world all this wealth creation we talked about earlier it was amazing globalization people created money out of thin air and then it just yeah. went too far yeah and and so the role of government really should be guardrails but governments aren't set up for that governments are they're salespeople. Right, they're just there to keep their job every three years in this country or four years in the U.S. Well, rightly or wrongly, the Twitter bots told me today that the New Zealand government has increased twenty public sector has increased twenty seven percent since twenty seventeen in the number of employees. So that's that government is just getting bigger and bloated. Like, have we got twenty seven percent more things we need the government to control for us in the last four years? Oh, but yeah, I don't know if it necessarily works like that. But I think it's a it's a recognition that over the last couple of years things happened that weren't planned for properly. So we need to bring in outside experts, right? This is where you bring in the firms that that do these things, the foreigners from other countries, and do in consulting engagements. So it's it has gotten bigger. But it's also a symptom of throwing people at a problem, mm. right? And this is where Americans, for all their arrogance and imbecile, imbecile, Im, uh, imbecilic, yeah, imbecilic. There you go. That's better. The American here. Um, what they get better than most people, if not anyone, is they don't throw people at the problem anymore. Mm. They throw ideas at the problem. Mm. They solve the problem in different creative ways. We here in New Zealand, we just throw people at the problem yeah c collaborative we're being left further and further behind because of it i think you're right i think a lot of problems get solved that way they're like oh we're going to get an expert bring them in and put them on the problem and that expert might or might not be an expert might or not be able right. to solve the problem whereas you're better off just saying just grab me six random people and let's get in here and include the expert yeah, yeah. but then let's all talk about this like in in programming like the field of programming, you know, you, you're always given problems. It's like, make this thing do that. You're like, okay, well, how do I make that do that? All right. So me on my own, I sit down, I've got experience in writing code, so I can go, I can draw on that, I can do things, and you're, and you're okay. It's way better if you've got someone else who's a coder, or even someone else who's not necessarily a coder, who'll stand there with you over your shoulder, and then you go, okay, we're going to solve this problem. And they'll go, well, why don't you do that? Yeah. And sometimes you'll go, oh, you, know, you can't do that. And other times you'll go, fuck, why don't we do that? Yeah. And it's like, oh, I'm the expert. I've done this for years, yeah. but I'm trained down this path mentally. And, you know, my neurons will run that way. So I can't even think that way. And you've seen it a different way. And that's a way better way to solve this problem. Yeah. yeah. Look, and I, I think it's a mindset shift that Kiwis recognize need to change. Political systems don't allow it to change because no one's elected for long enough times. And I'm not suggesting we'd want a, uh, a Putin who's there for life. You know, I'm not suggesting that, but um, Kiwis have recognized the fact that we, we can't just be farmers forever. And there's yeah. lots of agri-tech. There's zero. There's okay. rocket labs. There's things. But we, we actually need, we need to be, move away from landlords, one of the largest value creators in the country, and exporters of primary industries we have to have something else because this stuff will disappear yeah we need we need to move into disappear. that that thought creation i intellectual property that sort of stuff and I'm, I'm always talking about you know we could be the silicon valley of the pacific yeah we lack access to capital markets we can fix that yeah right? that's easy we can we just fucking call goldman say yeah. hey bro send some of your smartest 20 year olds here 
do some tax deal and bring your American money. Yeah, there needs to be a real focus on that because you're right, we've got smart people. Yeah. Again, you focus, you put money, invest in education so the people are coming up are smart and aware and can work in these fields. And then you just start selling thoughts rather than having to sell Yeah, but, but when you have to get elected and you have very oil. strong, you know, um, legacy and very successful and very good industries in, in farmer grower space. And again, it's not about attacking that space. It's about supporting that space, yeah. just also hedging your bet. Yeah, it's, right? it's, a, it's a transition. You su- yeah. support the yeah. You support that space. You invest though into this new area and just let it build. Right. Exactly. Know? But it's, you're, I, I agree one hundred percent. You're going to run out of your natural resources, or, or at least not run not if not run out of them. They'll become more expensive and less cost efficient to use and produce. But maybe then it all comes back in cycles and, and then lettuce becomes 50 bucks a head because yeah. there's only so many lettuce. Yeah. The, but the issue is we need to have that sort of hedge where lettuce is important. We want to produce it. And I'm picking on lettuce. I love mm-hmm. green, right? It's my favorite color. But then BS ideas like Instagram that are only going to be around for a huh. decade or two, we need to have those as well. Yeah. We need both. Yeah. And unfortunately, politics only allows you to back one yeah. with lip service for a period this of time. This was years ago. I was working for a telco, and um, what was starting to come out then, it wasn't WhatsApp. It was one of the earlier versions of one of those sort yeah. of communication things. And I was saying to these guys, why don't you just build your own version of this and give it to everyone in New Zealand? Right. And I was like, because it just feels like if you – give this to everyone in New Zealand, then you've got the whole country on your cool. network. It's like trade me. Yeah, you can just drop you can just, you can drop ads yeah. into it and suggest yeah. things to them and all of that. There was a massive opportunity that was missed yeah. here. Yeah. And 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 it's and this is a great place to go and be successful locally because no one wants competition. We've got a couple of banks. We've got a couple of reinsurers, a couple of insurance companies, a couple of building companies. We allow monopolies, duopolies, and cartels because mm-hmm. we don't have enough people to warrant a hyper-competitive nature. But those are sorts of that creating a WhatsApp, a Kiwi-style WhatsApp is a brilliant idea because, one, you're not going to be hit over the head with hyper-competition necessarily. Um, and trade me prove that. eBay's tried to come in. Yeah, Everyone's tried to come in, and they've succeeded. Right. Yeah, and that's and that's right, and that's and just they shouldn't because it's yeah. not an overly sophisticated. It's a shit app. platform. Yeah, it's it's not a great app. The UI is they not great. They haven't monetized their data as much as they should. I would imagine they're going to address that, um, but just to miss that opportunity and say, "Nah, I'm going to just keep my tins and wires and my mm. my SMS minutes and things like that." Yeah, that just it, we maybe that's a tall poppy then we're talking about maybe people don't want to push the boat out or they feel they have to leave the country to push the boat out or maybe there's i think i contend there's no money to take the risks maybe yeah maybe country. to the environment the economic environment is just not there to make people feel like it's worth taking yeah. this risk or they're supported in taking yeah. this risk that's yeah i think that is changing and you go around different circles you know, you get onto LinkedIn, there's a lot more vocal people now talking about this, so, you know, hedging. Some are, you know, attacking agriculture industry. Others are actually more like me and saying, actually, no, this is awesome. Let's bolster them, but mm. let's bolster it in, in this intangible way. Mm. And it takes money. So I think things are changing, but what it really it, it takes is is government support. Yeah. I think government said they're going to throw it. Ten million or something at it. Yeah, that's a fucking personal. Cheat. That's yeah. a that's a lunch with Elon Musk. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you need to talk in billions and you you're, to make this thing happen. And you're right. It's a it's the short cycle. It's like okay, we're probably going to be in government for three or four years. Yeah. Do we invest in this now, which is going to cost a heap of money, probably get us booted out the next election, but the long term benefits would be great. But we're not going to see that because we'll get booted for spending all this money now. Yeah. You know? Well, that's what ha- what's happening to this government. Yeah. Right. They're, all their spending, whether you agree with it or not, it's going to be used against them. Yeah. So no government actually wants to raise taxes to build r- the proper roads or spend money in areas that will be a benefit in 30 years' time. Yeah. 
as you say, different to the Chinese, where they've got these long-term views and they just do what they want to because they've got that strategy. It's okay, we're going to do this. Government is not concerned about being booted out in the near future. Yeah, they don't care. They yeah. don't care. But there is a there is a real upside with all of this, and and it starts with recognition. And there's a uh, a number of people in many countries in the world that are are starting to recognize that you know what Brexit might not have been the answer. Mm. That that the, there isn't necessarily a swamp in the U.S., but it does need to be fixed. And you know what? Um, maybe we should be thinking beyond, you know, building our infrastructure in this country beyond just 10 years' time. Let's build it as if we're 10 million people, not five or four that we've got. So there is a groundswell. These things come in, in, in swing in roundabouts. So I'm confident. Should we take a break? Maybe come back for part two in a minute? Yeah, fair enough. Losing my contact. My ears are getting sore. Are they? <laughs> yeah, from it's the It's because you don't have hair. 